Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Buttons on my bag! Buttons on my lanyard! Buttons on my hat! I love decorating everything with little trinkets and pins! Maybe you do too! But they're not all winners, are they? I've got a couple duds in my collection that are just taking up space. They languish at the bottom of the button box, never selected to be on the backpack. It's sad, isn't it? Couldn't they be... redeemed? Here are my least favorite ones. They all had something going for them at one point, but I'm ready for something different now. These three were all cute at one point. Look, two of them are even heart-shaped. But for one reason or another, they've rusted and look pretty gross now. All good candidates for customizing, I think you'll agree. Depending on how you want to decorate your buttons, stripping the previous design off might be unnecessary. Even so, I like starting with a clean slate. Or as clean as these rusted hunks of metal can be. Cover up the previous design with white gesso if you don't want to remove the original. Or use gesso to prime areas of the button you want to change. Okay, they're primed and ready. I'm going to tell you up front that the rusted ones are not ideal for customizing. The rust will come through any paint you lay on top, but I use them anyway because I don't know when to quit. Alright, I'm going to show you three methods of customizing your buttons, and they're all quick and easy. Method 1. Just paint it. I didn't like the way Evie disappeared against the brown background, so let's use acrylic paints to create a colorful background instead. I'm going with a stripey design using the primaries. Yellow, red, and blue. I considered changing the eye color, then changed my mind. <laughs> That's way better! This is a great button now! Once the acrylic is fully dry, coat the button with a varnish of your choice. This is a necessary step for hand-painted buttons, otherwise you can bet that acrylic paint will scratch off in no time. So make sure you seal it in. Method 2. Fabric. Have any cute scraps of fabric lying around? Slather some glue down on the button, but not too much because you don't want it to seep through the fabric. Then place the button down onto the portion you like. Cut out around the button and trim the excess. Add some more glue to the fabric around the edges. Gently press the button into the palm of your hand, and then around the edges to wrap the fabric around to the back. This glue only takes a couple minutes to dry, so I like to keep the edges pressed down with my fingers the whole time to make sure it dries very flat and precise. Just about any fabric will work, but cotton fabrics glue the easiest. If your fabric has a direction, make sure to take note before gluing it to the button. I didn't notice that I put this Pikachu on sideways. Oops. Gluing fabric to your buttons is not only super easy, but it uses scrap fabric that might be too small for any other project. And the result looks deceptively high quality. Like, ooh, not plastic, but a fabric button? So fancy. Method 3. Paper. Pretty pictures are everywhere. Whether it's packaging, postcards, or calendars, there's always something I'm reluctant to bung into the recycling bin. Like, look at this beautiful full-color pamphlet I got at a local art gallery last week. So many gorgeous watercolors. I think I'll use this one for my button. Cut a generous circle out of the design you like. Then, if the paper is very thick, pick at the edges and see if you can't remove a layer or two. Tissue paper is far too thin and would get ruined by the glue, whereas cardstock is too thick and won't fold around the edges very nicely. You need something in between. Once you're ready, smear glue over the button and place the paper on top, keeping in mind which way is up. Using the palm of your hand, bend the paper around the curved edge. If your palm isn't big enough, pressing into a cushion puts an even amount of pressure on the surface of the button, and it helps mold the paper around the edges. Just don't use a good cushion. Apply more glue to the back if need be, and hold down the edges until they're dry. This paper was already semi-glossy, so I don't feel the need to varnish these. I wanted to try this with Pokemon cards too! 
I made one button that came out a little thick, but overall worked really well. And one button where the paper got too thin, and, well, it's not my best button, that's for sure. It ripped a little bit, cropping is kind of awkward. I still think it's a cute idea, maybe you can do better. <laughs> Extras! Who says a button has to stay too deep? You can put anything you want on there, really, especially if you're desperately attempting to cover up rust. Rhinestones, charms, you name it. Get creative and have fun. I'm using colored glue sticks and a hot glue gun to create an icing drip and shoving a few cabacons in there while it's hot. I believe they call this deco din. It was really fun. <laughs> of course, the more stuff you put on there, the heavier it becomes, so keep that in mind. There we have it! A whole batch of fresh, new buttons that I would choose to wear any day. They're way better than before, and I had a lot of fun making them. This is one of those easy crafts that looks good no matter what you do. Well, most of the time. Let me know if you give any of your buttons a fresh new face and what you choose to do. Thank you so much for watching, and stay artsy! Annyeong! Delightful buttons available at Zazzle.com. Link in the description.